my hat will probably be on this entire review because of the simple fact that my braids are a struggle and I'm getting ready to get them redone because I'm getting ready to go out of town. So, yeah, the hat's going to stay. But um, this is Queens, Ain't No Sunshine. This is episode four, season one. Um, getting right to it. We pick up where we left off the last episode where Bree finds Jeff in the bed um, and he has passed away. He has succumbed to whatever tumor it was that they removed. I guess they thought the surgery was successful and I guess they thought that chemo would also be successful and none of that seemed to work. Um, I don't even think they got to the point where Jeff was even on chemo. He was still recovering from the surgery, but the surgery, I guess, was not a success like they thought it was. Um, Bree makes all the necessary calls. And she's in the process of trying to figure out, should she tell the kids, should she not tell the kids, you know, do I want to have them have one more night? And then, you know, as she looks at them in the bed, she's like, I just want them to have one more normal night. So, you know, she calls the coroner as they're removing Jeff, you know, she just, you know, she looks real nervous and real fidgety, like, you know, be careful. And, you know, that's still her husband at the end of the day. And before they take him away for the final time, you know, she ends up giving him a kiss and all that stuff, because at the end of the day, that's still her husband. Um, so the kids are, um, a few of them wake up and, um, in the process of, you know, everything going on and them taking Jeff, you know, he's like, mom, is everything okay? And she was like, yeah, everything's fine. Just go back to bed, get some sleep. She wakes them up, cooks them breakfast. She makes pancakes. She's not answering so many questions about Jeff. And, um, she sits down, cooks some breakfast, and then she goes, I have something to tell y'all. Um, I didn't know in the last episode when Alexis was calling because someone did point that out that she was going to play such a pivotal part and play such a big role in the series and in this marriage to, um, or with Brie and, um, Jeff. Shout out to Eve because with her doing her pregnancy on this show and also playing a mom and then just this role in general, she's just doing such an incredible job. And, um, just my hat off to Eve just in general. She's just doing such a great job with the character of Brie, um, who would have thought Eve from, you know, her own sitcom and being in barbershop and, you know, all these different things and being in the cookout and playing all the roles that she's played, that she would be this girl on this, you know, on this show on ABC, on this, you know, comedy drama, you know, not a soap opera, but, you know, just who who knew? I think that she's doing her storyline is one of my favorite storylines in the show. I think that she's doing a real, real, real great job as this character. And um, I like it anyway. Um, Alexis continues to call. She calls everybody over to the house. Um, and then when um, she gets a hold of Jeff's phone, she sees that, you know, the little one eighth Peruvian mistress continues to call. And Valeria is like, well, at the end of the day, have you told her? Have you answered the phone? She might have a right to know. Um, Brie is still a little bit tense and is still, and, and, and rightfully so, and upset about the fact that Jeff has cheated. And, you know, she's like, yo, you die and leave me with this. I don't get to be angry at you. I don't get to make you miserable the way you did me. We don't get to have this out. We don't get to fix this. We don't get to do nothing. You left me here with the kids and you cheated. Um, Jill is more on the side of Jeff because she's feeling guilty about what she just recently did to Tina. Um... When we see Jill get the notification that um, Brie needs her because Jeff is passed, she's in the she's in the bed with the reporter lady who came to her hotel from the last episode. So we're still continuing on from that. Also, in that moment, Tina lets her know, I'm on my way. I'm in L.A. I'm coming to see you. I'm in the car. I'm coming to the hotel. I'm in the elevator. I'm at the door. And um, the reporter lady from Out Magazine basically lets it be known, listen, you might think this is going to be your first and last lesbian relationship, but it's not. You didn't do anything here that you didn't want to do. You were having fun. Um, Eric comes to the hotel about JoJo because the verses that Valeria and Eric were listening to, the old verses that Naomi did, they kind of put two and two together that JoJo may belong to Eric. Um, I'm not going to say yes or no to that situation because of the simple fact that Cameron showed up at the hotel the previous episode and thought the same thing. So we got two people to get tested and figure out exactly who Jojo's daddy is. The good thing about it is both of them are stepping up because we don't see that. It's usually the other way. We got to figure out who it is because they don't want to be there. Um, Let's see. The preacher comes over to make arrangements for the funeral and he's asking Brie about her remarks. She's like, oh, I got to speak. 
And, um, you know, she don't know what to say. She don't know what she wants to say. You know, she's saying, listen, he was many things, but he was also an adulterer. And, you know, Jill and Erica, like, well, you know, he was more than his mistakes. He was this, he was that. But, you know, he was also, you know, some good things as well. She ain't trying to hear it. Um, Valeria, you know, is on the side of, you know, like I said, she's on the side of the mistress. She's more so um, understanding of why, you know, Jeff's mistress is so concerned and, you know, takes pity on her and lets it be known at the end of the day, listen, she don't owe you anything. Jeff owed you the commitment, the loyalty, the honor and respect because that's who you took vows with. And I'm in 100 percent agreement with that when you take vows with somebody and they may happen to cheat. The person on the side does not owe you anything. Um, it's wrong, especially if they know. But at the end of the day, they don't owe you jack shit because realistically, the person that you took vows with is the person that should be loyal, honest and faithful. And if they're not doing that, that's on them. That's them violating your marriage. Um, Valeria takes pity on her, goes over there to go see the mistress girl, lets her know, hey, listen, cry, figure it out. I know you may think you love them, you know, but at the end of the day, this is your past. Cry it out tonight. Forget about it tomorrow. Let it be done. Let it go. And um, as Valeria is leaving, she's like, when's the funeral? And I believe Valeria told her because she ends up showing up to the funeral and it doesn't go well. Um... In the process of everybody being under the roof and dealing with their own drama, Tina's there. Tina notices that Brie isn't um, really receptive and isn't really grieving or isn't mourning the way that I guess, you know, a typical mourning wife would be. And um, Tina asks Jill, does she seem off to you? She's like, well, you know, Jeff cheated or whatever the case may be. I never told you that. And um, that's when, you know, Jill starts to get a little... Um, not, not acting real suspicious, but I guess, you know, I guess trying to cover up the fact that she did what she did. And I guess she's also nervous about how to even break the news to Tina in the process of it. Her and Tina do speak, but it's not originally about that. Um, Jill tries to basically cover up the situation that basically, um, that recently happened by basically just saying, let's move in together. So, um, we've now seen Jill cheat on two people. She cheated on her husband with Tina you know what I'm saying? The woman that you cheated on your husband with, you've now cheated on her. So um, it looks like Jill is trying to find herself and find out exactly what she wants to do and who she wants to be in these relationships and in her love life. Um, Let's see, what else happened? Oh, under this roof, because everybody's there under their under the one roof with all their problems together. Um, JoJo gets locked in the basement. Eric goes downstairs to get something to drink, um, an adult beverage. And JoJo happens to be there the basement door locks from the outside and they can't get out. So they end up talking, end up, you know, vibing like dad and daughter would end up talking about hypothetically, you know, if I had a daughter or if I knew who my father was and all of that stuff and I wish he were around. And um, who but Naomi um, comes to the door and opens the door and was like, I pray that you didn't tell her. And they had already agreed that, listen, if anybody's going to tell her, it's going to be me. I'm going to be the one to let her know. I'm not going to have anybody tell her the news that I should have told her. And she basically lets Eric know the reason I never said anything about me being pregnant is because of the simple fact that it was all about you and Valeria. Y'all took the thing that was most important to me. Y'all took my music and it was all about y'all. Y'all was going to cover Us Weekly. I knew before the San Diego show, before we broke up and before I left the group that I was already pregnant. And that's why I didn't tell you because I drove for five days straight after that. I went to Kansas. I went to San Diego. I went to San Jose. I went to Niagara Falls. I was in Connecticut. And by the time I landed in Philly, that was when I decided I couldn't get rid of this baby. That's when I decided I was going to keep my baby. But at the end of the day, that I didn't need you either. Um, Cutting to the funeral, um, we find out that um, Jill's going to be singing. So we get a Notori Naughton singing moment. We didn't get too much of that on power. Um, and Notori was always, to me, the strongest vocalist in 3LW. She has a beautiful voice. She can sing. I didn't know that we were going to um, get her singing on the show, but I'm so glad. I thought it was just going to be Brandy's moments. We do get more acoustic Brandy moments on the show. Beautiful voice. Um, shout out to Brandy. Brandy is just stunning. Um, like I said, Eve and this, Eve's growth as an actress is just incredible. And just as a star overall, um, it's crazy how Eve has sustained and just, um, not crazy. It's, it's, it's beautiful how she has sustained and just grown, 
you know, from music to TV shows to fashion to movies to daytime TV and, you know, now an uh, hour-long, you know, hip-hop, you know, comedy drama on ABC. It's just incredible to witness, and I'm glad to see it. Um, we get to the funeral. We get to the church. Jill goes into confessional, and um, the father who actually came to the house to do the funeral arrangements, who's actually officiating the funeral, is the one that she's in confessional to. And um, in the process, father lets Jill know that you're an icon. I saw the BET Awards. And in the process, he, um, in but so many words, comes out to Jill. And um, after that, Jill tells Tina the secret. She cheated. And um, she lets her know, I'm just trying to figure out who I am and what I want. And Tina lets her know, well, whatever it is, I hope you find it. Tina was very receptive, very open, and very, very comforting. She wasn't judgmental. She wasn't harsh. She wasn't mean. You could tell she was hurt, but she was um, she was very understanding. What she offered was understanding in that moment, which is a lot of people don't offer when people make mistakes like that. And understandably so. Um, let's see, what else happened there? We get to the funeral, Jill, um, no, Bree still hasn't found the words, and, um, the mistress lady walks in, and Bree loses it, Naomi's all for it, um, Jill tries to fix the situation, you know, Tina gets up, they all try to make sure Bree gets up off the little girl, and, um, <laughs> Bree's hat falls off in the middle of the scuffle, Jill puts it on, <laughs> that was one of my favorite parts, um, and they all, you know, they get everybody out of the out of the main church and, you know, they go into the study or, you know, a different room or whatever the case may be. And um, Valeria also did ask Eric, too. She was like, Is it, at the end of the day, was there ever a moment that you were with me and not with Naomi? He was like, no, not really. You know, she wanted things to be secret and you didn't. Um, and one thing that happened in the episode, too, Naomi actually apologized to Valeria for the beef and, you know, and vice versa, because he was a main piece of it. And um, Valeria admitted, you know, I stood on you guys' backs. And, you know, Naomi also admit, like I said in the previous video, um, Valeria took the group to the next level. You know, sometimes that Latin spice, that Latin sex appeal, that Latin pop, you know, the sultry Latin, da 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 you know, that little element. Sometimes it does take things to the next level. And um, especially when you add a hip hop edge to it, we've seen it several times. And um, like I said, I saw some I never thought I would see. I never thought I would see Naomi apologize to Valeria about anything. Um, let's see what else happens at the funeral. Bree ends up talking to the mistress girl. What did you love about him? Did you really love my husband and all of that good stuff? And um, in the process of them talking, um, Valeria and Naomi are listening, and um, Bree breaks down. She breaks down and finally she realizes what she wants to say about her husband. Um, at the funeral, she says her remarks. You know, she lets him know, listen, my husband was a flawed person, but he was a great person. There's not a moment that he didn't try his best or, you know, to be a great husband to me and be a great father to our kids. And um, as she's, you know, saying goodbye, you know, and going to the casket and, you know, one eighth Peruvian mistress is there. And um, she's crying at the casket and, you know, Bree's like, yo, you tripping, you know, her face was like, and um, Bree popped out a piece of gum. Um, I don't know if anybody caught that, the Kingdom Come um, piece of gum that Jada Pinkett and Tony Braxton had <laughs> um, at the funeral. Uh, Bree popped in a piece of gum and um, she looks over and then... Um, the little mistress girl is sobbing and then vomits into the casket where Jeff is on him. And then Bree looks over at her and goes, you're pregnant, aren't you? I knew from the very jump, I said it. I was like, yo, I knew this girl. I know this girl is pregnant. There's no reason she's calling this much. She was calling the same amount that Condola was calling Lawrence on Insecure. I knew the girl was pregnant. I knew she was going to get pregnant. Like... I knew she was pregnant. When I tell you I knew she was pregnant, I knew she was pregnant. So we're going to see that um, unfold the next episode. I've been messing with this hat this whole time, but like it just won't stay. I don't know what's wrong with my head. Um, 
And that's basically the episode. Like I said, we got moments from Brandy singing again, which is always a highlight. We got Notori singing this time. Um, and we're getting closer to figure out exactly who JoJo's father is. And um, we see Brie deal with the death of her husband and she lets it be known, listen, I'm a 42-year-old widow. I have all these kids. And, um, you know, she's trying to figure out her way. And um, Jill is also trying to figure out her way now because, you know, Tina says, listen, I had to wait for somebody like you all this time. I'll wait a little bit longer. And um, she wishes her good luck. And that's basically the episode. Um, I'm trying to think about what else may have happened in the episode. What did I miss? I don't think I really missed too much. And if I did, I'm pretty sure y'all would tell me down in the bottom in the comments. Um, what was your favorite part of this episode? Um, what do you think next episode is going to bring? What do you think of the show so far? Who's your favorite storyline? My favorite storyline is definitely probably Bree so far. Um, it goes between Bree and Naomi. Um, what'd you think of this episode? You know what I mean? Um, did you think that um, the young lady was pregnant by Jeff? It, um, did you know from instantly seeing the episode? Um, what do you think about Jill cheating on Darren, her ex-husband, and now on Tina, who she cheated on her husband with? Do you think she's wrong? Or is she just trying to find herself? What are you guys thinking? Um, and like I said, who do you think is JoJo's actual father? That's another thing, too. Um, so we got a couple questions in the air. And um, we started the episode... Um, we now know that the group was named the Nasty Bees and now they're renamed Queens and they have a new single out. And um, yeah, so that's the episode. That was the review. What'd you guys think? Um, don't forget to like, rate, comment, subscribe. Thank you for all the views and comments on the previous videos and this tiny YouTube entourage that I have going on here. But I appreciate it. I appreciate the camaraderie and the correspondence that we have. I love... Um, doing this i will always do this for this show like i said for how many seasons we get i'm into this um but yeah that was queens ain't no sunshine like i said what'd you think of this episode what was your favorite part my favorite part um for me was probably um just breeze storyline overall you know what i mean the the navigating you know how to tell the kids you know even those first few moments of the episode and then you know her dealing with the mistress and then the very end um and then of course to um naomi's reasoning as to why she never told eric he could potentially have a kid and i think um one thing i noticed she didn't say was that well you know cameron could also be the father too i noticed she didn't say that um but other than that, yeah, that was the episode. That's the review. What did I miss? I'm pretty sure you'll tell me. What was your favorite part? Um, let me know down below. And um, let me know what you're looking forward to in the season. What do you think about this season so far? Like I said before. Anyways, until next time, guys. Like I said, don't forget to like, rate, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff.